What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, 249 again. I know I said I wasn't going to be pumping out videos in my last one, but you know what? I just put together, well, not just put together, I kind of revisited my medic bag that I keep in my patrol car at all times. And uh, I went through the contents. I took out some stuff. I added some stuff. So I said, you know what? I'm going to shoot another video. So stay tuned, and we're going to take a look at this bag right here. So this is the 511 two banger bag. And um, I've been having this bag for probably two and a half, three years. And I've used it solely as a medical kit um, inside of my police car. Now this isn't a boo-boo kit. This isn't a uh, band-aid, scrape your knee, fell down type kit. This is a save your life kit. Um, I will deploy this Anytime I deploy my rifle, there's a, there's a situation and I need to take my rifle out of my patrol car, this bag's coming with me because it has necessary life-saving um, things in it, applications, things like that. It also has uh, extra spare magazines and, and things just in case, you know, situation really, really goes bad. Um, I have extra ammo. So... Again, like I said, this is a straight trauma bag. This isn't a uh, put a band-aid on a cut type bag. I have none of that stuff in here. I have a spare um, my medic kit just for that. Um, so, I'll give you kind of an overview of this bag. Um, you can see in the front, it's got some, uh, some stuff you can put a morale patch. All I put on there is this med patch because I want people to see this and know that this is a medical bag. This isn't a EDC bag or anything like that. Right up front, it's got this front compartment. It's got the, the middle compartment and it has these two compartments back here that hold my AR magazines. It doesn't have any side compartments, but it does have Molly. And what I've done is I've attached a tourniquet on each side. One's a cat tourniquet, this one right here. The other one's just a no name brand tourniquet. But you know what? If your life's on the line, you need a tourniquet. You'd be glad that I have two of them. Um, and it has this mesh in the back. I think I got some alcohol prep wipes or something in there. So I don't know, some first aid burn cast. I think I just threw that in there because I didn't know what else to do with it. Um, it has the strap that does have that hook and loop. I don't have anything attached to that. And it's got a pretty padded shoulder strap, as you can see right here. Um, it's pretty comfortable. I haven't worn this for any extended period of time because I haven't needed to, thank God, because uh, that means that situation may go south real quick. So I can't tell you the comfort level. Um, it is a sling bag. And if I were to uh, deploy this bag, it would rest around the small of my back, you know, away from all of the essential gear that I would need up front, away from my uh, rifle that would be slung and hung in the front so this would be to the small of my back just in case i would need any of these items again kind of a, a little 360 of what it looks like the cat tourniquet on this side the front compartment middle compartment ar mags and another kind of knockoff tourniquet right here on the side so sit tight and we're going to get into the contents of what i have in there all right so let's get into this first compartment right here i don't carry much in this first compartment because it's not really that big so all i have is some gauze roll some medical tape um, some nylon gloves more gauze just little packages of gauze different size gauze i got some shears that i might actually put on the outside that way they're a little bit more accessible more more gloves and then more bandages i do have looks like i do have a few band-aids in there but this is mostly gauze rolled gauze pad gauze just different size gauze for uh just a basically what we like to call pack the wound in case there's a lot of bleeding going on we can control the bleeding and um you go from it that way so let me bring you in for kind of a, a tighter view 
that's what it looks like fully packed out you see it's got the mesh that's what holds everything into place and then i just kind of put the gloves and the gauze and um, leave those medical shears right there that way they're easy and accessible so that's basically it for that first little compartment and I, let me zip all of this button this up and then we'll get into that second compartment all right so second compartment right here it's a two-way zipper so i can either open it from this end or i can open it from this end 511 is kind of known for for that type of uh accessibility i guess you could say so again if you miss that I can open it from the from the right side or the left side. It, it doesn't matter which way I go. That way, if I have the bag slung, I can one-handed get what I need. So let's see if I can do this one-handed. I know I'm not as easy with the one hand, but we'll try and figure it out. All right, that's what it looks like. It's pretty packed. Uh, again, some more. Uh, some more dressing, some more gauze. Uh, like again, like I said, this is trauma bag. This is stop the bleeding and save a life. Uh, so you're gonna see a lot of that. Um, we've got the uh, American, North American Rescue, North American Rescue, I'm sorry. Um, NAR rolled gauze. Uh, we got some chest seal. We've got some uh, trauma wound dressing, so like some in Israeli bandages. Another uh, trauma dressing, another like Israeli bandage again, North American Rescue. Their stuff's expensive, but man, uh, you can take this stuff to the bank. Another uh, chest seal, so that's, that's four chest seals, two in this package and two in this packet. Again, some more gauze. A triangular bandage. Another tri triangular bandage that can be used as gauze. Some combat gauze with some quick clot on it. A larger roll of the medical tape and then as you can see inside i've got some uh chem sticks just in case we need some artificial light and i got some tweezers right here and that's basically all i keep in this compartment it has the velcro but i don't need anything i'm not concealing anything in this bag again this is just straight for trauma and i can lay all of this out for you guys to see. That's what's all in that main compartment. Hopefully that will help until emergency medical personnel can get there if I need to treat another officer or if I have one, you know, one victim, I can hurry up and treat them. Uh, whatever it needs to be, I can treat them. All right, let me pack all this back up and then we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so heading around to the back of the bag where we have these uh, AR mags. Uh, all you do is just you pull this tab and it has a uh, a loop way down there to where it'll it'll keep it from from moving around too much so i have the i have a mag pull and i have a steel ar mag in here I just have them affixed with that little sleeve that's in there that way they don't move around too much Yeah, so it just Velcros, just like that. And again, got the cat tourniquet. Um, it, uh, like I said, it's attached to these Molly things with rubber bands. In the event of emergency, man, you can yank on these things and and break those rubber bands. Um, I'd rather 
have them and not need them than need them and not have them. So I've got the CAC tourniquet on this side. And again, like I said, I've got the, uh, I don't remember what name brand this one is. Um, I have this one on this side. So that's two tourniquets right there. Um, I have always have a tourniquet on my duty belt for myself and I have spare tourniquets in my patrol car. Um, I don't know how much this thing weighs. It doesn't, it doesn't weigh much at all. Maybe five pounds. Okay, question. Where do I keep this thing? I keep it in the middle of my patrol car. So if you can envision a patrol car, if you've ever seen one, you have the, the computer, the laptop, you have that console, and then normally there's an open space, and that's where we have our AR attached, you know, and we have a shotgun maybe attached right there. There's a void space that um, that this sits in. So it literally sits right next to my AR that is in my patrol car. I used to keep it in the back, in the cargo, but I said, what sense does it make if I'm gonna deploy my rifle and then I have to run to the back of my patrol car just to get this bag? So I've since moved it to the front up there with me and it rests right next to my AR. Well, this is a short video, way shorter than what I normally do. I know I get long winded and stuff like that, but I just, I saw it and I said, you know what? Um, I've been wanting to kind of incorporate a little bit more, you know, law enforcement stuff onto my channel. Um, kind of give you a glimpse of what we do and what we carry and how we're thinking when it comes to law enforcement. Um, you can always carry a bag like this with you in your personal car. You don't need to be law enforcement. I would suggest if you're going to carry a bag like this with the intent of helping someone, then I would get some training. You can look online. There's some training that you can get, some medical training. Um, just knowing how to pack a wound, knowing how to apply a tourniquet, just knowing how to handle a stressful situation um, can really save a life. You can perform medical treatment to someone before EMS gets there and I'm telling you you have the potential of saving someone's life so this bag I think I saw on Amazon for 40 50 bucks maybe um, you can pack this thing out maybe this gives you some ideas on how to pack it out um, again get you some training and again you don't have to be in law enforcement to have a bag like this just be be ready and prepared you know how I am so that's it uh, give me your comments, what you think about it. And um, yeah, if you like this content, if you like stuff, videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. And that's about it, guys. Um, I'll be shooting another video. I don't know what yet. I'm just kind of popcorning ideas, really. I have some stuff written down, and, and I think I'm just going to roll with it. Um, that's it, man. It's 249. Stay aware and stay prepared. In the event that I wasn't clear where I keep this thing in my patrol car, I'll show you. So, computer, center console, armrest, back here in the void is where I was talking about. That's where it sits. In between the driver's seat and the front passenger seat is where I keep it.